All right, we're streaming live. Mm -hmm. um, my name is Marshall. I am the assistive technology person here at um, Seminole State. <clears throat> I take care of all the, um, you know, accessibility issues as far as technology is concerned in the classroom with students and helping students and instructors alike to um, make everything smooth as possible. Um, here at Discipline Support, we you know provide accommodations. We, um, we we try to help the students as much as they can before they enter. So usually we may send them to places like Voc Rehab or Vision of Blind Services, whatever needs they have that can help them help prepare them for college and to give them a better education um, feel. Um, and I've been here for quite a while, close to 18 years. And, you know, we've done a lot of transitions and that is basically what our department does. We do some other things now that involves health and wellness of the college. And I can always go into details later on what else we do. We do a lot of stuff with um, the community trying to make a healthy environment, both mentally and physically. And, you know, we do stuff in house like neurooptimal brain training and things like that. Um, so, who wants to go next? Anybody? Uh, maybe library? Maybe you want to kind of discuss what you kind of do? Hi, yes, of course. Um, hi, I'm Ellen Asalto. I am one of the librarians here at um, Seminole State. Usually you would find me. Um, you know, on the Altamont campus, but right now I am um, coming to you live from um, my office at home. And the library really does, um, we try to um, keep in mind any kind of, um, try, when we purchase products, when we subscribe to products, we try to keep in mind that it needs to be accessible to all of our students. So we have um, databases that, um, Hey, Nicole, can I uh, share my screen? Yeah, you should be able to. Uh, you're our co-host, so go right ahead. I am. I have that power. Um, so I am going to share my screen and show you all. Um, we have a library guide that we have created. And um, in the library guide, we have, um, we, if you click on audio, and it will show you databases um, that, that it will read the article to you, to your students. So if there's any kind of um, um, visual impairment, um, these kinds of databases will work really well. We also, once um, we are open, the library is open to students um, coming in and using it, but you have to make an appointment. Um, we have on our computers, we have Clara Read. So once again, it will help read um, any kind of um, a, a web, web page document. Um, we have tutorials. Oops, but that's still under construction. We will have tutorials there. Um, and all of our tutorials, all of the modules, all of our, uh, they all are closed captioned. So we try to do our best to um, make everything accessible to all students in, that um, need any kind of library material or access to our library. And we also have recently, uh, I think there's a screen cap of it. If you go under Campus Partners, Elena, uh, we do have um, links to the, our Campus Partners that uh, work with um, students, including Disability Support Services, Academic Success Center, and I'm sure we'll add more as time goes on. Um, but at the top there, we have recently implemented a few questions that help students when they're making an online appointment with a librarian for research or citation assistance. They can immediately uh, request um, different things that might help them with that appointment, and we are uh, more than willing to accommodate all types of needs and uh, preferences in those online research appointments for the library. And I think we, was that everything we had, Nicole?
Yeah, I think that's the lion's share of it. I mean, we do have so much, but of course we have um, uh, our library website. You can go there. Uh, also the library virtual mode guide, which is linked from the library website. Um, we have many different ways to get to things and any resource that the library has, um, actually most of them are, have accessibility integrations. We use our LibGuides, like the, we have many of them, um, in addition to the one that Elena just showed us. And that platform, that system has accessibility built in from everything from uh, uh, the alternate text for images, all of the things that they implement in that system are accessibility minded. So most of the things that you would, that we offer are going to be suited to you. And if you have an issue with any of our products or services or resources, if you tell us what's going on, we can either edit something or change something to help a student, or we can research it and figure out what we need to do. I mean, we're very open to communication and that could come from a student, faculty, staff, or someone from the disability support services or e-learning department. You know, we're very willing to work with those relationships to uh, make something happen. Oh, great. Um, any questions so far? Um, if not, um, maybe um, Jackie, I know you used to be a few doors down with the United Way. So maybe explain a little bit more what, what that's about. Uh -oh. She's muted. Um, she's all muted. Is there a way to unmute her or? Sorry about that. Oh, okay. Um, there she goes. Hey, everyone. I'm a little hoarse, so I apologize. Um, I'm Jackie Bradley with Destination Graduation, and normally I'm at the um, Seminole, the Sanford Lake Mary campus, and I do have another person that's on my team, and that's DJ Feliciano, and she's usually at the Oviedo and Altamont campus. But right now we are working from home. Unfortunately, um, our office all staff is working from home, so I'm unable to be on campus like everyone else is with a short schedule. But we do uh, still uh, get calls uh, from students and also emails from students and referrals from Seminole State staff, which is wonderful. Um, you can reach Destination Graduation, um, and I have a phone number if anybody wants to jot it down on our email address, which is uh, 407 Three six two eight zero five two, or you can reach us at destination graduation at hfuw.org. And we are partnering through uh, Heart of Florida United Way with Seminole State. And what we do is we work with students who are facing hardship and emergencies um, when they are unable to like pay their rent and electric and to keep them enrolled in school and not you know, drop out because of life happening. Um, we work with them if they qualify through our program to help them with things like that, with rent. Uh, sometimes it's even to get into a new place with deposit assistance. Uh, we also have the pantry, which um, I believe is opening this week. Uh, and I'm not sure what the schedule is, but it's being run by Jan Lloyd. Um, and we work real close with students also with their financial aid when they have issues with appeals and different things like that. And I work real close, um, well, with the financial aid department, basically. And uh, so that's kind of what we do. Um, we help students also with referrals. If we can't assist them directly, we're always searching our database for alternative resources. Uh, locally and to help the student to get through whatever hardship that they're going through. And that's kind of what we do. Hmm. Thank you. So how is the, um, you mentioned the rent request, but yes. with all this going on in the world today, how is that, a, is it, do you see a, a big increase? In well, it's been a little slower than normal because we're not there on campus, I think, because of the COVID. Um, but we're getting a fair amount of students that are still coming through. A lot of times it's usually before the term starts uh, when the students are having issues with financial aid and things like that. And it's not come through and they're not able to pay their bills and things like that. So we work real close with them. And um, 
also with rent assistance or electric assistance, let's say they lost their job and they've used their financial aid, leftover disbursements, whatever, and they're needing help with that. If they qualify through the program, uh, we basically will help them by paying their rent. Uh, we are, you know, capped usually for a certain amount that we can cover, but normally whatever hardship they have as far as rent or their mortgage, daycare, um, electric, water, um, sometimes usually with their tuition, we can also help with that as well. Okay. <clears throat> um, so Dave, how are you today? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. I, I know you had some stuff you wanted to share with us. Yes, absolutely. Um, thank you for having me, by the way. Um, always a pleasure to see you. <laughs> yeah, always. Um, uh, my name is Dave Christensen. I am the Central Florida sales rep for Enhanced Vision. Um, we provide sales training um, and free demonstrations of low vision uh, electronic magnification devices, um, both desktop and handheld uh, devices. Um, uh, through Marshall, if anyone needs to get a hold of me, uh, he has all of my contact information, including email and cell phone. Um, all of our demonstration for anything under Enhanced Vision uh, umbrella, um, the demonstrations are free of charge and also have no obligation. Um, what I wanted to show you guys real quick, uh, not to take up too much time, our new newest device is called the Merlin Mini. And literally, this is the whole thing. It collapses down to this size. If I stand up, you can get an idea of the perspective of it. Okay. It has the ability to fold and be unfolded. It collapses. And this is what this is what the entire device looks like. It is battery operated, very, very popular with students in the classroom uh, because it is battery operated and it is um, uh, able to be moved from point A to point B. Um, the demonstration of the products, uh, like I mentioned, is free of charge. Um, there's two screen sizes. There's a 17 inch and there's a 15 inch. Um, they both have the ability to be either in a roller case or a carry case. Um, has distance viewing for uh, classroom use. Also has um, uh, autofocus for, for the, uh, the writing aspect of, of schooling. Um, we also work through the Division of Blind Services, as you know, Marshall. Um, so students that go that route, they still have the, the ability to, um, to uh, under their counselor, to, to have a demonstration of any of the products, including the, uh, the numeral and mini. Okay. Okay. Um, so what's the most popular item that you have requested? I'm just kind of curious, like a student perspective and when my light goes out. <laughs> I'm not moving. There we go. There you go. Um, right now, to be honest with you, the Merlin Mini has taken over the top spot. <laughs> um, uh, since it's been out for about, a, about two months now, about a month and a half, two months, um, because the students, as you know, with the, with the virus going on, a lot of the students are, are you know transitioning from class to home. Um, it's been completely on fire um, because of that aspect and because it's easy to carry around. Um, so that, that's kind of taken the top spot as far as the CCTVs. Um, the handheld portables, uh, that, that's always gonna be the Pebble, which is, which is the, the five inch screen one. Um, but for a desktop and portability wise, the Merlin Mini has taken over that spot in the past, you know, uh, four to eight weeks. Okay. Yeah. That's pretty interesting. Because <clears throat> we do have one of the little Pebble Minis. Those are really cool. Yes. And we have the regular stand up Merlin that we have in our testing centers. Correct. The Merlin we ordered from you. Yeah. The, the, the larger, and, and, and to be honest, I think that the, the, this industry has its, um, um, its go-to devices as far as um, uh, moving forward with, with the different uh, technology. 
Um, and I think that the collapsible units that are, you know, almost the size of a laptop, that's that's where this industry is probably going to be gearing towards now. Yeah. Okay. Um, that kind of points a question. I was thinking about how this pandemic has affected each organization. Yes. Um, anybody, does anybody have any... How has it affected your organization as far as how you're running business now and what have you done to, to change it? Because, um, you, know, you know, for us, we're all working remotely and now we have to adjust to school online. But, um, you know, some of the outside organizations, even like, like the VA, how, how, do you, how did you adjust with the um, pandemic and uh, adjusting your business? My adjustments, uh, Marshall, came with a lot of Zoom classes. <laughs> um, obviously, we, we have the you know the PPE when we we're face to face contact and and kind of still stay a distance away from the clients that we're we're demonstrating the products with, um, and and you know hand sanitizer, all of the good stuff that we we, we carry around with us. Um, a, a lot of the uh, a lot of the clients that get get a hold of us too, um, we we. Kind of geared a lot of things towards the uh, the Zoom uh, demonstrations, but if the if the person that we're speaking with has limited vision, sometimes the Zoom uh, the, the image is not there, and the person to person is needed. Yeah, so so we're we're taking precautions to to uh, to meet with them in person um, and try to still you know uh, keep keep a, a distance there and wear your protection. All right. Yes. Anybody else want to chime in? This is Elizabeth from the Vet Center. Um, we're part of the VA. And so we've like some of our individual appointments, they've gone to virtual or telephone, depending on the, the veterans preference. Some of the, um, especially some of our older uh, veterans who don't either don't have the capability or the knowledge to do virtual appointments via the computer. Mm -hmm. um, so sometimes they'll opt, they'll opt to do telephone rather than virtual. Um, face to face is very limited. Over at the medical center, they are back to 50% um, face to face, uh, but 50% is still virtual. Um, all groups are still virtual, so via telephone or uh, video connect. Um, one thing that has changed uh, pretty drastically is how we do outreach because we're still doing outreach, um, like today. So I don't. You can kind of see in the background. I'm I'm in my car because I'm doing an, an outreach event today this event via you know video but we're also doing a um big a baby shower parade today so normally we the we as in the vet center and the medical center will um kind of join forces and put together a baby shower for all of our women veterans who are expecting but because we can't have them come into the medical center and kind of congregate in a large group we've actually put together all of their diaper bags, all of the, you know, the just kind of initial necessities. And we have a parade of uh, VA vehicles, uh, American Legion, VFW, and we're going to each veteran's house and delivering those items. And so I've kind of taken, I may have to, to, to end a little bit early so I can join back in the parade, but um, we, but we're taking all day today to deliver those items so that they can still have their baby shower, but in a very COVID responsible way. So um, outreach has become very interesting and we're just kind of thinking outside the box how to still bring those services to our veterans. Um, it's, it is pretty, um, <clears throat> have to be pretty creative. Mm -hmm. um, anybody else want to discuss on how pandemic has changed their business way? What? Um... Oh, I can do it. Um, this is Ellen again from the library. Um, we we utilized our um, library guides and a lot of, even before the pandemic, we were moving a lot of our um, services online. We were um, purchasing more eBooks because of our distance students. And so I think for us, it was less of a, um, surprise or less of a shock to have to move everything online. Um, we did so quickly. We tried to put information on our uh, library guides for students, for faculty. We have chat so that a student could reach a, 
you know, a, a live person. They didn't feel like they had to just leave a voicemail and hope that, that they would get an, a response back sometime soon. They knew they were talking to someone live and that we would um, work on the issues they were having. Um, Michael, I know you guys had to put your foot on the accelerator pretty quickly when things changed. How was so, that experience? Hi, everyone. So I'm Michael McCready, one of the members of the uh, e-learning department here at Seminole State. And so for, let's see if I can balance this out. So we had to um, onboard a number of faculty quickly uh, in terms of training, how to approach um, conducting the classes online, how to uh, make sure they meet the accommodations of our students uh, across the spectrum of students that we do have. We as a department though, um, in terms of the everyday operations, it felt very familiar uh, since we're e-learning and online. So luckily it hasn't had that much of a um, process impact. We were actually able to streamline a few of the processes. So we were able to work uh, more quickly, shall we say, with um, troubleshooting areas for faculty and for students through some of our, um, through the use of Zoom. That actually became a, a godsend, for lack of a better phrase. Instead of being on the phone trying to navigate what you see, what someone else is uh, going through, Zoom allows us to share that experience together. And so that helps for troubleshooting, seeing where things are going, um, or could things where things could be corrected. I won't say going awry, but where things can be corrected. So, plus, you know, like you said, accessibility, you had to really almost be proactive because you don't know what kind of students now you have to deal with. Um, you know, you have maybe low vision, maybe hearing. Um, just, you know, it's a you know it's, it's a lot to have to um, get ready for and and to be ready for all that, um, especially with technology. And I noticed there's a lot of stuff that we have now that's available as far as checking for accessibility and making sure everything's equal access. And I can cover a few a little bit of that um, if you'd like at this time. And I'm going to share my screen. Uh, as long as technology works, technology is always that interesting is that interesting thing where it should work, but oftentimes it doesn't. So for those of us um, who are unaware, uh, the e-learning department at Seminole State works hand in hand with our Disability Support Services Office. Seminole State to provide services uh, for we used to be mainly online classes, but now it's for every class because every class <laughs> has some remote component to it. One of the things we use in Canvas, as Elena uh, had mentioned earlier, uh, where Clara Read is an uh, option, also is an option built into Canvas, is something called Read Speaker Text Aid, which is an orange button on the left-hand side of the course, Global Navigation. It can read the navigation for you. It can read Canvas pages for you. It can read uh, sometimes embedded documents. And you can drag and drop or at least move it to the uh, different areas. Uh, read aloud. Uh, um, it helps all readers actually for reading, writing. It's a good studying tool, anonymous, autonomous learning. There's an option where it can read a document, save that as a MP3 file. And then that way someone can use it um, in a listening environment later on. And it's free for students. There's no additional cost. Also, one of the things we've done with our partners in our CTS department is um, allowing students to learn more about Microsoft's uh, built-in immersive reader, which is in Word, I believe PowerPoint as well, at least Word, um, where students can bring up a Word document in an online environment. It reads aloud to them. Uh, also, again, just like with Read Speaker Text Aid, it helps with writing and setting tools, uh, Tom's learning. To get there, you would just go to your um, Office 365 account in the cloud and then click on view and then click on immersive reader or at least navigate to view and then navigate to immersive reader. Then there's a play button at the bottom which would read the information for you. Additionally though, if this was something where you were a student who also wanted to enhance your grammar skills, there's a grammar button which is in the middle which allows the read speaker text, or not read speaker, I'm sorry, immersive reader to highlight the nouns, verbs, adjectives and adverbs in desired colors for you as well. So it helps out with 
that portion of learning as well. And there's different ways of adjusting the text size on the screen, how fast it reads back to you, and things like that. Also, a number of our students um, benefit uh, because of um, support. Uh, and also, uh, as, as a side note, for of closed captions. And so we also provide um, closed captions for students who need those to meet the accommodations for them. And we also was working with faculty to enhance courses that um, could also benefit from the use of closed captions. You'll find a lot of mathematic courses uh, and science courses benefit from closed captions just so you can not just hear the word and but see the terminology is being used because sometimes those are our everyday terminologies. And what you'll see most of the time with captions in our Panopto videos, if they're in YouTube, we use a great tool um, for Mara to bring them into um, to overlay YouTube captions, which all of us know YouTube does not the most <laughs> accurate for many of its auto captions. And so, and also our Zoom meetings uh, that have been coming in are automatically closed caption. There are some corrections on those that faculty do take, uh, but again, we're making sure that uh, students who uh, receive captions as part of their accommodations, as well as students who may not receive them, but would benefit from them. In fact, uh, studies show that there's an academic uh, improvement when closed captions are included on videos. As far as accommodations for time tests, uh, as we all know, we many of the tests in Canvas or even our third party tools do have um, timing on them. And we work with the faculty to show them how to use um, a couple different tools to apply the appropriate accommodations for those time tests, whether it's double time, time and a half, etc. Normally, this is something a faculty member can do in one or two minutes, and it does a uh, across the board for all published um, tests and exams and quizzes. And therefore it alleviates the pressure from the faculty member to do this all the time to make sure they meet the needs uh, of the student uh, who are receiving these accommodations. We also have a, as Marshall mentioned, a tool called uh, You Do It, uh, Universal Design for Online Content Inspection Tool. It's actually created by UCF uh, as part of a grant. And what this tool does with uh, members of our e-learning department and our online course accessibility assistant, it basically scans the or inspects the entire Canvas course and highlights areas where uh, course design can be made better and improved upon for accessibility natures. If you look on the left, we see that we have a uh, bright yellow background and red text and a faded green text and blue. And if you're colorblind or various reasons, this item on the left is not what we're gonna call the most accessible. Moving over to the right, we can see that we have a reverse text for highlighting that great high contrast. Uh, instead of relying on color, we can use bold or italic, so formatting. So again, something beyond just the color spectrum we're seeing. The use of applying necessary bullets for lists so it's read uh, more easily. And of course, headers over the various areas. So our um, screen reader tools uh, built into Microsoft Windows and Mac OS, as well as our third party tools can read those as well. And so that, Marshall, is how we support our um, during this time in our pandemic, as well as um, outside of the pandemic, shall we say, we provide support for uh, the students and we go through our department and reach out to us as well. Cool, that's a lot of great information. Um, who else? Who else is here that we have missed about for their um, department or service organization? Anybody else want to speak? Um, how about any questions? Any kind of questions that anybody has? I have a question. Um, right. My name is Megan Anderson, and I'm the diversity chair for the Student Government Association. Mm -hmm. And I just had a few questions about the e-learning features. Um, so for the reader speaker aid, is it compatible with um, different languages outside of English as well for students who are comfortable with like for example, Spanish as a primary language? So Megan, that's a great question, which is, seems to be a pat phrase everybody uses when they have a question. So um, yes, it is compatible with other languages. I wanna go through uh, as well as the rest of the department to make sure we know what languages are offered in that uh, tool. And Megan, if there are students who need a language that is available but not offered, uh, reach out to us at elearning at seminalstate.edu and we can make sure that we can um, do, investigate that further and try to get that as part of the 
feature set for our students. Okay, perfect. And then for the Canvas online, um, I know there's a few students who kind of have like um, trouble with staying on the computer for long periods of time due to like some health issues. So are there any features that's offered to kind of like adjust the brightness even like a little bit or to like give it a blue light filter instead or anything like that? So in terms of, I'll answer this backwards, in terms of the blue light filter built into Canvas, no, that's something that um, as you can uh, I think it's night vision is in Windows 10 and Windows and Mac OS as well. But there is a high contrast setting uh, that if you go to your profile, which is the icon in the upper left-hand corner, whether you have your picture on it or not, select that and then go to settings, I believe. There's a high contrast feature, which not just students, but uh, faculty as well and staff use as well. Because when you're, as you pointed out, when you're staring at a screen for longer times of the day or need to come off or not strain ourselves physically, that high contrast really has come in handy. So that high contrast is available on built into Canvas underneath your profile picture and I believe settings. And then in terms of the blue light, uh, no, but we do recommend use of uh, the night light or the, the evening vision, which gives us the screen a uh, more golden glow for lack of a better phrase, um, just like we have in our uh, smart devices. Okay, perfect. I'll make sure to send that along. And then for the immersive reader feature as well, um, for students who are taking like foreign language classes, if they wanted to like use that feature to kind of like check their grammar in let's say like Spanish or like a French class, would that give them an accurate like depiction of like what certain grim grammatical like speeches are supposed to sound like? In this case, that is something we'll need to check. We're going to work with our part, our faculty partners for that uh, because with any type of machine generated reading, there is pronunciation is unique. Is it accurate? Is it regional? Like, uh, are you listening to more of a Cotillion Spanish because they're from Spain or something more Caribbean? So that's what uh, uh, we'll investigate for you and um, get back to you on that. Because I, again, this is one of those self checks is this, really helping our students or is it a hindrance for our students? So we'll, we'll check on that for you. Okay, thank you so much. Great questions. Um, does anybody else have any questions? Um, actually, I have one for you, Elizabeth. Um, one of our coworkers was um, asking, what's the best or quickest way for a veteran to obtain sufficient medical documentation to register for academic assistance? Um, I so, guess this, uh -huh. Yeah, so the, the quickest way would be for them to talk with their primary care doctor. And then depending on um, what type of documentation they're looking for, whether it's for physical health or mental health, then that would depend on what doctor from there they would get um, that information from. So it would either come from their primary care doctor or from their mental health provider. So if it's documentation that they're looking for specifically for um, that's mental health related, then if they have a, um, like if they already have a mental health provider that is already established, then they could go directly to their mental health provider. But if it's something for physical, uh, physical health disabilities, then that documentation would come from their primary care doctor. So it would just depend on um, specifically what their disability is and whether it's coming from a physical uh, disability or if it's mental mental health related. Okay, because I know a lot of the, the vets come come here and they always say they have a lot of issues trying to get their documentation from the VA and stuff like that. I didn't know if there was an easy way to streamline it or. Um, there, there really isn't. So one of the things, uh, one of the reasons why it could be difficult is maybe the reason how that they're presenting it because uh, they providers can't provide documentation for uh, a disability letter um, for like a claim, for like a disability claim. So if they are um, basically telling their doctor that they need a disability letter, the provider may think that they're, they're requesting a letter specifically for a, like a comp and pension letter. So maybe explaining to the students that they're needing it for accommodations for school rather than stating that it, like a disability letter, uh, maybe having the conversation on how they're approaching the doctor could be helpful. Mm -hmm. um, but really the primary care doctor is the first place to start. Is there a 
Um, is there a form that the school has already or is, is does the school require if you can kind of refresh my memory is there a um is the school just wanting a a a letter from from the doctor or is there a, a form like a blank form that could be filled out i don't believe there's a blank blank <laughs> you know usually they you know they'll come here um maybe lewis can help me out a little bit um to, to deal with you know, a lot of students more than I do in, in that nature, but um, usually they have their documentation. They'll bring it to us and it's, it's from a doctor and sometimes from the VA, they have a lot of paperwork. They're not exactly sure what they need. Um, and so they may be sent back to actually, you know, get more documentation. And, then, and sometimes it can be a little bit it's, you know, more for them. It's more painful for them to try to get that information. Um, right. Because um, veterans have access, they can get a copy, they can go to release of information and get a copy of their medical records. I think it would just depend on what exactly the, um, what kind of documentation they're needing. Mm -hmm. And because I know that providers at the VA, they do have limitations on what type of letters they can write. Um, it, it would just depend on what, what exactly the veteran is needing. But right. the place to start would be their primary care doctor. Um, if they are specifically looking for something based on a, um, a mental health disability, then it would be their mental health provider um, or, or neurology, especially if they are having issues with, if it's a traumatic brain injury, um, if it's something related to dyslexia, that sort of thing. Uh, then they could also talk to the neurologist as well, if that's something that they, um, if they have a neurology provider. Okay. All right, great. Um, anybody else have anything to say, input or any comments? Hi, this is Nicole from the testing center. I'm so sorry, I just had to step away for a moment. It wouldn't be okay if I added some information for testing because we did renew some of our processes for this semester. Of course. So hi everyone, again, my name is Nicole Suarez. I am a part of the assessment and testing team here at Seminole State. I am currently located at the Oviedo campus with Luce. And currently with this situation with COVID and the distancing policies, we have shifted some of our processes. We have shifted to mostly online communication for students completing certain exams, such as course exams. They are now for this semester completing them with their professors through Canvas, through Lockdown yes. Browser, with uh, whatever the mm -hmm. professor chooses to use. We assist in providing proctoring services for students who are having technical issues and cannot complete their exams normally, such as they cannot use a functioning camera or they do not have internet services. We provide our services for the professors to help proctor the students and also provide accommodations, such as making sure students have their double time or any accommodations that they get through DSS. We also assist students with placement and entrance exams such as the Accuplacer and PERT exam. We have shifted our processes. We used to do that in person. We are now in appointment-based uh, system and we are using the Sign Me Up calendar through the SAP portal currently for students who want to take any type of exams with us. I believe, Marshall, I think I see you speaking, but I believe you're muted. Did you want me to give you a number to call back? Yes, I was muted, thank you. Um, any other questions, comments, concerns uh, for any, any of us? Um, I yeah. have a 
question about the testing center. So um, how many, like how much of a notice should students give if they would like to come in to take a test or like how far in advance do you recommend that they start scheduling the appointments to come in? We recommend scheduling as soon as possible. Our, the processes are a little bit different for each exam. So if a student is taking an exam for a course, a seminal state course with their professor, they would be using our testing online website, so our TICO website, and they have the option to select whichever date and time that their professor allows for their exam. And on that date, we would contact them through email to ensure that they complete their exam. For all other exams, such as placement exams like the PERT and the ACCUPLACER, maybe an entrance exam, such as the TEAS exam for nursing, we have certain cutoff times in our availability. That way, once a student signs up for a specific exam date and time, we have a testing agent available to verify their account and contact the student to ensure that they have everything they need for their. Okay, thank you. Great, great questions today. Um, this is the first time we've done this. It, you know, again, it's always, to me, it's about collaboration because you know, every organization or department has their own specialty. And a lot of times students, clients, whoever, have a hard time of knowing exactly where to go. And you know, with this kind of a collaboration, you know, we can point on, we can say, hey, go see Dave if you need something for, um, you, know, you know, for your vision needs. Um, or anything like that, with, you know, DBS or you know, rent assistance or anything like that. Um, you know, it helps us to help students and whoever more better point them in the right direction, so they don't have to go through much, so much red tape. And um, that's kind of really what this is all about. You know, we have you know, normally we have tables, we have pizza, we have music, and all kinds of crazy fun and. Um, and everybody just gathers information. And so I want to thank you guys for you know stopping in, you know, showing us what you have and what you're about. And any final words, Nicole? Or um, well, yeah, I, I did actually want to say on that note, um, speaking of all the campus partners and community partners, um, the lib guide that we've currently called the Accessibility Hub. Um, under your direction and your team's direction of disability support services, we're going to further develop that guide to be uh, a place. I mean, we, we all have our individual departmental web pages on the Seminole State uh, College um, website, right? Um, so we're compartmentalized and we have all of our information there, but we are going to use that guide under your direction to provide a place where we can very easily and quickly add information from anybody and anywhere and anybody <laughs> that we need to put in one place as an access point for students, faculty, or staff to figure out what's available. Um, so just kind of reminding everybody and um, going forward after this meeting or we'll collect information and contact information um, once again with Marshall and his team's help uh, to create that uh, resource as one place that people can find out what's available, what to do, where to go, who to talk to. Perfect. Um, any final questions or comments or anything? Uh, Marshall, this is Elizabeth at the Vet Center. If you do find that you're having a student who's having a little bit of a difficulty with let, with uh, getting a letter, um, mm -hmm. please have them uh, call, call me at the office at 407 eight five seven two eight zero zero and I can work with them to kind of liaison with the medical center to try to figure out the the best place to help them the best way to help them perfect perfect anything else before we sign off all right um I want to thank you for um attending um Elizabeth, Dave, Jackie, 
and everybody else. Um, it's great to see you guys and hope to do something in person again soon, whenever that can happen. Thank you. Oh. Yes, thank you, Marshall. You're welcome. You guys have a great day. You too. You too.